Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show, as we are doing right now, and is then posted to our website um, and our archives for you to watch at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can um, access our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, and that is for all libraries, so all types of libraries. So you will find uh, topics on our show for all types of libraries, uh, public, K-12, academic, uh, corrections, museums, archives, anything and everything. Uh, we're there, only criteria is something to do with libraries. Um, the cool things we think they're doing, um, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do uh, presentations for us sometimes, and we also bring in guest speakers sometimes. And today we have a mixture of that. Um, today we are talking about our uh, 2022, 2022, sorry to say, One Book, One Nebraska, uh, The Bones of Paradise. And um, I'm actually going to hand it over. I, I'm not sure who's starting up. Tessa, you maybe okay. to um, take away it. You know, um, and we've got a group of people here with us this morning. And as we get to each section, I think we'll you all, all can introduce yourself at that time um, um, when you're um, doing your bits. Go ahead and take it away. Hey everyone, um, I'm Tessa Terry from the Nebraska Library Commission. And here with us today, we have um, Josh from the Nebraska Center for the Book, Becky Faber from the Nebraska Center for the Book, and the One Book, One Nebraska Selection Committee. We've got our author, Jonas Agee, and then we've also got Erica Hamilton from Humanities Nebraska. So those are our speakers for today. I'm just gonna hand things over um, to Christy to talk a little bit about One Book, One Nebraska in general and um, the Center for the Book and what they do. Christy, are you still there? Lost her webcam, I noticed just a minute ago, but she is still connected. I don't hear Becky either. I'm on. Oh. You just so can't see me. Webcam, so that's that's okay. She's just going to be on audio with us today. Um, well, what's with Christy? She she her camera dropped off, so maybe she's lost connection briefly. Um, can you uh, just yeah. start up? I'll get started for Christy. <laughs> um, so the Center, Nebraska Center for the Book is a reading and writing. Um, program and organization that just really brings together everyone and anything that has to do with books in Nebraska. We have publishers involved, we have Humanities Nebraska organizations involved, um, museums, authors, booksellers, and readers. So it's just a really nice group of people who love talking about Nebraska authors and Nebraska books. So what we've done with the One Book, One Nebraska, we've partnered with Nebraska Center of the Book, Nebraska Library Commission, and Humanities Nebraska to choose one book that we can um, promote across the state for readers. And I'm gonna hand that over to Becky for a little bit because she handles our One Book, One Nebraska program. Thank you, Tessa. Uh, the process for one Book, One Nebraska begins with the public because all of the nominations for One Book, One Nebraska come from members of the public who uh, nominate a book. And that, that form will come up a little bit later so that you can see uh, what is asked for on the form and how to nominate. And 
uh, for this year, for the 2022, we started with 35 books being nominated. So we had a, a very nice amount to start with. What we're looking for is to make sure that the nominated books fill criteria. The book should either be written by a Nebraska author, someone who has lived in Nebraska. Um, they should have, they might also have a Nebraska setting or a Nebraska theme. And for 2022 with the Bones of Paradise, bingo, we hit all three categories. Once we've uh, been able to determine that nominated books meet the criteria, then those books move forward to a screening committee made up of members of the board for the Center for the Book. So um, this year we had a reading committee of seven and it's a very intense process. The cutoff date for nominations is the middle of June. And once we have those nominated books, we're checking for criteria and then the reading committee starts reading. And we're reading with the mindset of how the book would appeal to Nebraska readers. We go through several rounds of reading. Every book um, that moves forward is read by a number of readers. And when we have determined what our shortlist is, then the final vote is made by the full board for the center for the book. And the book that has been selected um, is announced when we have our celebration of Nebraska books in the fall. Are there any questions up to this point? This is our 18th One Book, One Nebraska. And as you can see from the slide on the screen, we have had just some remarkable books that we have brought to the state and encouraged reading and discussion. So if we don't have any questions just yet, and you can ask questions at any time, um, Krista will kind of moderate that and let us know if anything pops up. But I'm going to hand it over to Jonathan and let her just tell us about her book. Oh, good. Well, I'm just so pleased and honored and thrilled, all of the adjectives, uh, to be part of this. And I've lived here for 21 years again. I grew up here in Nebraska. And I had never imagined this moment would come to me. And I'm just, I'm just beyond happy. Um, I want to just tell you a moment, um, a little bit about the book, and then I'm, I'm what began the book for me. And then I'll read a little passage from the book. Um, for the, you know, starting in 1990, I began to travel into the Sand Hills of Nebraska, and this is my third book set out in the Sand Hills. I was, I had never been there before, even though I grew up in Nebraska, but my family had hunted out there. And I was just so struck by the, the beauty and the rawness of the place and the underlying currents of, of um, tension and, and the difficulties of living there, as well as how pristine the environment was. Three things began to move through me and I didn't, well, two things really from the Sand Hills initially and I, and Rosebud Reservation in Pine Ridge, just which sit in South Dakota, just above Nebraska there um, at the very top. Um, and the first was I went to Wounded Knee and it, it completely changed me, but I didn't know what to do with that material. I, it just sat there and it made me think very deeply and, and feel. And then I was shown a ghost shirt in a little Catholic church and by a native woman and it was sitting in a drawer and she pulled it out and showed it to me and it was just magical and powerful and i again i didn't know what to do with this material it just stayed with me for the next 14 15 years and i i knew one day i would write something that brought these materials together but i didn't know what it was going to be and then i heard a story about my sister had told me about a cattle ranching family that had this tradition of taking the young, the oldest son and giving him to the grandfather to raise in a really harsh Spartan environment so that he, that child would be prepared to take over 
the running of this very large ranch. And that's the story of the Bennett families that I eventually settled on. And when I heard that story, I felt it click into place, almost like a key and a lock or the right combination. And the three pieces came together and I realized I would tell this story said, you know, if, from 1890 to 1900, and that it would be the story of this Sandhills family and of Wounded Knee and the repercussions of the two families that occur and the way they come together and, and the violence that, it, that happens. And I see even now the two cultures, the white and the native cultures living side by side uneasily in that part of the country as they do in other parts. So that was the way the story began for me. And as soon as I, I put those three pieces together, I saw this opening scene. And this usually when I begin a novel, and this is my sixth novel, I, I usually throw out the opening, say 50 to 100 pages. So this is one of the few times I've kept the opening. And because it was always here, this was always the opening, the last day of, of, of J.B. Bennett's life. and. I was really scared uh, to write a story where the main character dies immediately <laughs> because that's not very <laughs> encouraging or inviting, but it's a mystery who is who has killed him and why and and why is he found with a Native American young Native American girl next to him and what is what does this all mean? And so I'm just going to read you the beginning of chapter one. It was mid-morning in early May when J.B. Bennett crested the hill, stopped, and surveyed the little sand hills meadow where the windmill was slowly clinking in a wobbly circle. The metal rubbing on metal in an uneven cadence made him reach for the small tin of grease in his saddlebag, the one he already knew he'd pulled out yesterday and left sitting on the window ledge in the tool shed when he'd repacked his saddlebags for the trip to his father's ranch this morning. It was getting to be harder to keep track of every little detail. He wasn't that old, he reasoned, but then he had the boy and the 20,000 acres and the men and the cattle. He lifted his hand and let it drop back to the saddle horn. It was the other thing that drove his mind these days. He reached in his shirt pocket and pulled out the photograph he'd recovered from his son's dresser drawer a few hours ago. God only knew where Hayward had disappeared to. The picture showed his wife, Dulcinea, as she'd been in 1880 when she came to Nebraska, fresh-faced and fiercely happy, her long auburn hair barely contained by a ribbon, her hand shading her eyes as if she could see as far down the years as it was would take to find him again and punish him for what he'd done. The wind was blowing so hard that day, he remembered praying that she wouldn't notice the fine grit from the sand hills that found its way into every crevice and seasoned your food. That night as they lay out in their bedrolls, she teased him about the sand between his toes after they'd made love. It wasn't their first time. That had happened when they agreed to marry at her parents' home in Chicago. By the time they bedded their first night on their new ranch in a new land, her initial shyness was replaced by a light teasing he found delightful. He grimaced now. When had he ever used that word? But that was her effect on him. She brought a new language with her and made it his. He wondered if his son Hayward would miss the picture of his mother. This one had been lovingly preserved, wrapped in a pale blue silk scarf that must have been hers, embedded carefully in a stack of his old baby clothes, hand-me-downs from his older brother, Cullen. J.B. couldn't even think Cullen's name without wincing, while the staggering wine clank of the windmill seemed to grate harder on his ears. Today, he was determined to find Cullen and bring him home. His father, drum be damned. He gathered the reins in his fist and the young chestnut horse lifted its head and pawed, impatient with the writer who paused too long. And that's the way the novel and the story begins. And by the end, you'll find out everything you need to know about how he met his end and, and about the great love story that is the, between the, um, Dulcinea and JB, and then between the families that are involved and their love of the land, because that's something that keeps everyone together out in the sand hills. So I'm going to, as I go around and talk to book groups, et cetera, and at libraries, I'm going to talk a lot more about the, the backgrounds 
of this these stories and and how it all came to be yeah um john can you tell us a little bit about your background as far as um what you do and um how you became a writer yes um i grew up in nebraska and i have a degrees in english and creative writing and um uh, i think a ma phd from the state university of new york at binghamton and which is now binghamton university they they lost the state university of new york i guess i always thought that was kind of cumbersome uh, <laughs> so and i came back to nebraska to teach at the university of nebraska in lincoln in 2000 and before that i had taught for 22 years up in Minnesota in St. Paul at a women's college there. And I also taught three years at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor in their MFA program. And right now I teach in our undergraduate and graduate program. We offer a graduate degrees, PhD included um, in creative writing. So our students write books <laughs> to get a degree and it's been a lot of fun. I love it. And um, I've gone around the country teaching workshops and researching. And I, I, my books mainly, I decided very early on that I would write books that about the Midwest, set in the Midwest, that uh, involved all three places I had lived uh, growing up. And that was Iowa, Missouri, and Nebraska, of course. So I've managed to write three in Nebraska, two in Missouri, and only one poor sad novel <laughs> set in Iowa. I don't know that I'll ever get back to Iowa. I thought I'd write three books in each place and then I was going to be free to do whatever I wanted. I don't know whether I'll get all this done, but that's kind of my life goal. And I write short stories also. So I got uh, five collections of short stories right now and a sixth ready. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And I ride horses and I have my husband's uh, Brent Spencer. He's a writer. He works at Creighton, teaches there. So we also we write screenplays together, and we're trying to write a novel. We've been trying to write a mystery novel together for a long time. It's comic. Maybe that's the problem. We we were really getting going, and then the pandemic hit, and it, it hasn't been really funny since then. If you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little unfunny. I think we were just scrambling after that to kind of stay afloat and not coming up with very many one-liners, I guess. Um, so other questions or anything else? Uh, no questions, just a, a comment that um, that's a, the when you're, after you're reading the intro to the novel, very powerful beginning. Oh, good. It really um, sucks you in, which is oh, good. great, I think, yes. Yeah, thank you, yeah. I just hated to kill him off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't apologize <laughs> when I kill off characters. <laughs> you kind of hate to start with that kind of thing. But, the story um, goes where it wants to go. <laughs> it really does. It does. And I was just doing a book club the other night, and uh, I think people were surprised that I said, yeah, I, I, I turn my story over to the characters quite often to find out what else they have to tell me and, and what else they want to reveal. Um, so it's it's a very organic process. I don't have a big plan to begin with. And I, I let it lead me to see where we're going to go. And the hardest characters in this novel, one of the hard ones was the child Cullen, who when we meet him, he's he's really he's like 17, 18 years old. And I he's a very dark character who's had a very, very hard life. And his grandfather, Drum also a difficult character but once i began to ask them well what what do you you know try to figure out what who they were beneath all of that because i think we're all so complex mm -hmm. um, the revelations were very interesting to me and i think they there's there's a lot going on there as you'll see mm -hmm. i hope <laughs> No spoilers. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm, no, I'm working around it. In this book club, there were people who hadn't finished it yet, so we had mm -hmm. to not talk about the ending and not and pray that everyone just kept their mouths shut enough, <laughs> so they they'd be able to finish it without having it ruined. Although I have a friend who reads the endings, uh, the ending of every book, to see if she 
she'll find it worthwhile to read it. She <laughs> reads that first. It's like, what kind of thinking is this? I mean, you don't like the surprise? <laughs> the ending isn't the whole the whole book, though. Yeah, and that's true. She just the other just, parts. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, she doesn't <laughs> like the tension of waiting, I think. <laughs> so if she knows what how it's going to end, she can read it. Everybody reads differently. Okay. I know. I know. <laughs> I tease her about it. <laughs> well, we're going to move on a little bit to um, how you can be involved in the One Book, One Nebraska program and some of the resources that we offer for just our readers out there. But keep typing in your questions and comments, and we'll get back to those as they pop up. So, one of the things we offer is a website that readers can go to to get all kinds of information both about the book about Jonas, about how they can be involved i'm just going to pull that up really quick and we've just got a lot of information on here and on our get involved page we have our social media connected um, we also have it up at the top corner of every web page on here so you can email us directly, find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and see what other people are saying about the book. And we've just got some of our most recent posts up here that you can kind of flip through. We also have discussion questions listed, and those are actually ones that Jonas wrote for us for the book specifically. So those are a great resource for whether you're in a book club group or just reading the book yourself. This is a great resource. Um, classrooms, however you're reading this book, we really encourage you to work through these questions. We also have some, the Facebook page where we encourage people to talk about the book, let us know what they think, um, tell us how they're reading it, who they're reading it with, and just be a little bit more involved in that conversation as well, talking about the book. Um, we want this to be a conversation across the state, not just in your book club. So we would really love to hear your thoughts. And you can find that um, Facebook One Book One Nebraska. And right now I'm going to hand things over to Erica a little bit so she can tell us about the Humanities Nebraska program that we have available um, to get Jonas to your book club group. Yes, thank you, Tessa. Um, Jonas has graciously agreed to be on the Humanities Nebraska Speakers Bureau, which means that Humanities Nebraska will help pay uh, her stipend and mileage to attend meetings with your library or with your organization to talk about the book um, and to talk more about what she shared with us today. Um, so, Tessa, could we? There we are. We there's our website. Um, and the way to find this, um, you go to the Speakers Bureau, and then if you go to um, Speakers, just click on Speakers. And Jonas is the second. <laughs> it's alphabetical, so <laughs> fortunately she has a name that ends with A, so she's easy to find on our website. And you can go and um, there's a description um, I think that's a bio of Jonas and then her program, um, Bones of Paradise, a novel examined, and her contact is, information is right there. And so um, the steps to book Jonas G for, um, for your program is to contact her first. Um, just give her, give her um, send her an email to see if she is available, work at a date, work at a time with her, get that all confirmed and set first. Um, and then after you get that confirmed with Jonas, you can go on back to our website and go to how to book a speaker. And if you forget the steps, we have the steps here. We also have the eligibility. And so to, to go through our speakers bureau, you need to be either a nonprofit organization or a library or a school or a university. Um, so step one is to, to um, confirm it with Jonas. 
And then we have an online application form. It's just a simple little one pager where you can give us um, your, the information about your event. And it's a $50 fee um, to Humanities Nebraska. But then, as I said, we will pay Jonas's, um, we'll pay her a stipend and we'll also pay her um, mileage to, to get to your location. So it only costs the libraries or the universities just that one fifty dollar amount. That's right. Yep. Nice. Yeah. We do have a question. Um, can uh, this be done remotely as well, or you know, in person or remote presentations? Well, that's a good question for Jonas. What What do oh, you think? Oh, sure. Yeah. No, I'm I'm fine with that. No problem at all. I, I in fact. Because of the current situation, I'm doing a lot remotely. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, it just seems safer. And mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And sometimes it's just easier for the book club. You know, they're meeting remotely. So it makes sense that we Ooh, can. A lot of them are now, yeah. Yeah. And the other night when I was doing one, um, there were some people in the library and some people remotely. So we were doing a Zoom, a combined um, event, and it worked well. It's, oh, it was fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I teach Jonathan Clark pretty anything. much. I'm I'm used to this. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem for me. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I make people talk. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> for online programs, you can still go through our speakers bureau and we will still pay the stipend. So mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's actually a very good deal mm -hmm. to have that set up that way. Yeah. Nice. And we do have some that says thank you, Jonas, for the discussion questions as well. Those have been very, uh, it's always good to have those for the book discussion groups and this discussions that are happening. Yeah, Jonas, can you talk a little bit about the program that you're offering through Humanities Nebraska? Well, one, I want to do several things. I'll, I'll give some background for the novel. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm going to elaborate more um, on the kinds of things that came into my work as I, my research, because a lot of research went into this book. They, it, when I'm writing historically or any of my novels, I do a lot of research. I like to do a lot of research in sight. And I'll also talk about um, writing, how I became a writer a little more, you know, in greater detail. And I'll talk about the the kind of themes and, and ideas that were at work here. Uh, to bring these issues, these social issues, the issues of family and trauma, and the the struggle for justice that is going on worldwide and that constantly goes on in our lives, beginning with practically birth in a family, and um, then the the various forces that are at work socially uh, to kind of as we we all vie for a place in the world, and to have some sense of, of recognition and respect. And those are issues that I'm very interested in. And I, I also talk a little more about, as I mentioned, I'll talk a little more about the creative process because that's something people are really curious about. And I also offer workshops that can accompany an appearance. I will do that with a book club if people want, um, I can, you know, we can do a whole day long event where we'll talk about the book, but I'll also offer a writing workshop if people are interested in that. And sometimes that's, that's, I have some approaches that really help people who always thought they wanted to write, but didn't know whether they could write, they begin to introduce them to the process and it's to kind of pull the curtain aside and to help them understand. I have some, some prompts that work. I do a lot with very, I collect very old pictures that I get from junk stores and antique stores and, you know, those old photographs. And I use those to help stimulate stories and to discover characters. And people often discover something out of their own past or their own family history when we do this kind of exercise. So sometimes people begin to write memoirs or family histories, and sometimes they've, they have stories that have been like, as, as occurs to in my life, stories that, that keep coming up that you, you know are your stories, but you don't know how to write them. And so sometimes I'll help them begin to write them and discover those stories. So yeah, it's a, it's, I kind of try to shape the experience 
to the group and what they have in mind and what they would like to have happen. Obviously, if it's a school, it's a slightly different presentation, uh, but probably more on the creative process too, because that's something that is really useful um, to all, everyone in school and just to everyone. I teach a course in creativity impact. So the, the capstone for our English major, for the people who are involved in the arts. And so it's something I'm really engaged in. And I, I think it would, it'll work on a lot of different levels. So the, you know, I like, that's, I'm glad they're going to contact me so that I can talk to them and, and find out exactly what they would like and, and what would suit their audience the best. And I actually have pictures. I, I, I got a power point. I'm just building it, but I, I have pictures now. I'm so excited because usually when I was going to book clubs, when the book first came out, I would drag along all these you know, old photographs I have and, and pictures from Wounded Knee. There's a great book called Eyewitness at um, Wounded Knee and it's the University of Nebraska uh, Press published it. And it was very, very useful. It continues to be useful because it gives a timeline about Wounded Knee, all of the printed historical reports, uh, and then the photographs that were taken, which are pretty profound. I guess they're either profound or not. So pretty profound means is meaningless. I'm sorry. <laughs> How about just profound? <laughs> Profoundly moving. OK. Um, yeah. Chris, do you have any questions? Uh, yes. Uh, well, I have one that just popped in. Yeah. Awesome. Wants to know, uh, Jonas, do you still teach at UNL? Are you, I Absolutely. know you were talking earlier about that. I wasn't sure. If we... Yeah, I'm still at it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to drag me out of there. <laughs> Put me on, tie me to a horse and send me off. <laughs> uh, I'm still working. Uh, I only teach one course in the spring, and that's a, a PhD course in, in creative writing workshop. They're working on novels, so we'll be working on that this spring. Um, in the fall, I'm going to teach my creativity course in the capstone, and uh, I will also teach a an undergraduate creative writing course in fiction. So yeah, I'm still teaching. I It just seems to be what I wanted to do with my life. Well, I always wanted two things. I wanted to teach and I wanted to write. And I figured if I could arrange it so that they supported each other, it would really work out and it has. I, was, mm -hmm. I feel very grateful. For years I've been satisfied with work. And I know that of course, knock on wood, that's a terrible thing to say that you're satisfied, but it's it's actually worked out. And uh, I I think that's that's important. It's it's helped. It's helped my writing, it's helped my family life, I think, that I'm not always struggling and thinking, oh, I need a different job, I need to change careers. Um, the only thing I've done to change careers is to move to a different place to do it, but mm. that's good. And I was very surprised by coming home to Nebraska. I didn't see that in the future, so that was good. And that really worked. Well, my sister and I had bought some land out in the Sand Hills after I discovered it, mm -hmm. the Sand Hills for myself. And I thought, well, but we only bought a couple of hundred acres. And when you understand the, the breadth of, of the Sand Hills, you understand that's like having a, a lot in a suburb. Mm -hmm. That's, that's virtually, it's useless, and <laughs> unless you're going to build a house there. Um, and um, but it was just so beautiful. It was on the Niobrara River, and it was we had, you know, river, and I, it was just lovely. But we neither of us, she's in California, neither of us got out there enough to really hang on to it forever. So we sold it, and it went back to somebody who was our neighbor and so he he got a bigger piece so he doesn't feel like he's in a suburb <laughs> you never know where life will take you yeah no i know but i i thought well if i come back to nebraska I'm, i'll be closer to my land and that because one of my ideals of course i imagined i would move out there and live there because i love it so much and uh but like many of the things we love it's better to visit i think <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know what I'd do out there. 
I couldn't commute to work. <laughs> Unless you're going to be a rancher, cattle, yeah. <laughs> yeah, then you need thousands of acres. Yeah. So you need 50 acres per cow-calf pair, which that's why that's you could only have four cows on the land. <laughs> <laughs> that, just, that seemed like this wasn't an enterprise that was going to go very far. No. <laughs> I love that your program is so malleable that people can email you and you can really just customize your communities rest program to what they're looking for, whether that's some sort of writing workshop or, you know, just a straight book discussion about yeah. your work. Absolutely. That's really, I love that you're so flexible in that way. I well, wanted to you. talk a little bit about how we can get books into book club hands. So one thing we offer at the Nebraska Library Commission are book club kits. And I'm going to just bring up our book club kits page really quick. We have all the One Book, One Nebraska titles available via our book club kits. And I'm just going to go ahead and search by last name. And here you can see all of Jonathan's books that we have available in our book club kit selection. So we don't just have Bones of Paradise, but we do have 50 copies available. We have the discussion questions here readily available for you guys. And it's a very easy process for you guys to check out books for a few weeks, a month at a time, depending on how long your book club likes to read something. And um, just be able to utilize the surface service from us. So I wanted to go over that a little bit. I believe we also do we send send sets of it to the regional library systems as well. Yes. So we're not the only one with book club kits. Our regional library systems also have book club kits. So you can check them out through them or through us. Um, it really doesn't matter. However, yeah. we can get the book to you. Are checked out to for when you want to, there's other places, there's other other options, yeah. Right, so if, for the specific time you want to read it, if we're already too booked up, check with your system. That's One really good. Mm -hmm. We do have a question, um, actually, about um, having Jonas come to visit, so if I can jump into that. Uh, Alyssa wants to know, if you're teaching in the fall, uh, would it be more difficult to book you for a visit? Um, do you prefer summer or spring or any particular time? To, you know, I, you are I rearranged my classes in the fall so to so I will be more available. I, I teach in three hour blocks each week. So my two classes will meet once. Uh, they'll, they'll meet Monday and Tuesday nights. So I, I'm available Wednesday through Sunday, basically. And yeah, just have to be back to teach on Monday and Tuesday nights. So pretty and much any time of year is perfectly fine to, you know, absolutely. whatever works in the library or yeah. the school at once. Yeah, yes. and the spring is the same thing. I teach in a three hour block on Tuesday afternoon. So I'm I'm there, I'm available, which is kind of nice. I always, I've always taught in big blocks because mm -hmm. Particularly when you're teaching, working with somebody's fiction or poetry, you you want that intense experience and you want them to be fully engaged. We we often eat together, you know, we'll we'll share some food and we just kind of we just lock down and do it for three mm -hmm. hours and it's good. We take a break. I give them a I give them a two minute break. Don't you think that's <laughs> enough? <laughs> All right, they get ten minutes. <laughs> Maybe 15 if I'm really not feeling it that night. <laughs> um, so no, I'm available. I'm I'm now people have contacted me some and I've you know, there's stuff happening in the summer, the spring. Mm -hmm. We haven't um I yes, there's something in you know, I've picked up a, a couple of dates in the fall too. So okay. Anytime. Whatever. Great. Anytime. Just not those not uh, Monday and Tuesday nights. Great. That was a great question. And I love that, yeah, you've been able to rearrange your schedule to be more flexible and be, yeah, readily available for book groups. Yeah. No, I I think it's in, yeah, this is very important. I, you know, all my life, I've, libraries really 
saved my life, the Benson Public Library in Omaha, where it, which was my public library. I I would walk there and, you know, just drag my a whole armful of books as a little kid home. And that's when everyone walked. I don't know whether you remember that or not, but we did walk. And I'd be I'd try to read a book while I was walking because it was so I just loved the library. And it just I always think of libraries as saving my life. Even in high school, I would just hole up in the on the floor in the corner of the Central High in Omaha in the library and read poetry. Uh, that's when I discovered poetry. I became a poet first, by the way, and, and then turned to fiction. I just thought fiction took, it was too hard. It took too much time. I didn't have that. <laughs> you know, I was a kid. I wanted, to, I wanted something you could get your emotions right out there. So as my life got more emotionally um, complicated, and I, I discovered poetry and I just read and copied poems out of books for hours. And it, for years, I carried around a book I made of poems that um, I had loved. And that was due to a library. And every place I've gone, I, everything I can do for libraries, I will do. You guys just save our lives all the time. And I know so many people who say that. Every, every writer says that or they're idiots. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Of course, they believe that because you guys are the people holding the books. This is great. We have to keep every we have to keep libraries going. This is important. We have to keep people coming to libraries, too. So the programming you do is so very, very important. And thank you for doing it. And we'll keep writing if you'll keep your doors open. That's the big thing. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, good, good. It's a deal. <laughs> All right, good, good. One event that we do every year is the celebration of Nebraska books, and that's always in the fall. We haven't picked a date yet for this upcoming fall, so keep your eyes and ears open for that. But at the celebration, it's free and open to the public. And one thing is we always have that year's One Book, One Nebraska author do a presentation. So. Jonas will be there. She will be presenting for the One Book One Nebraska about her book. And then we'll also have Nebraska Book Awards and the Geske and Bennett Awards that night. And then we announce at the end the next year's One Book One Nebraska. So it's kind of a nice bookend to the program. And so that's one thing we like to put out there that that event will be coming this fall. And we really encourage you guys all to attend if you can if you're here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, here's one thing we talked about a little bit at the beginning with Becky about nominating for One Book One Nebraska. So like she said, the nominations close June 15th, but if you nominate on June 16th, it just goes towards the next year's selection committee. And this can be found on the One Book One Nebraska website. It's a very simple for you to submit um, Nebraska Center for the Book or Center for the Book Nebraska gov slash O B O N hyphen nomination um, dot A S D. So we just want to know the book title, the author, your email, just so we know who's um, nominating it, and then why you think it's a great book for the One Book, One Nebraska program. We can't uh, select a book if it's never been nominated, so we really encourage you, if you think there's a book out there that meets one of these criteria, nominate it so that it can get into our judges' hands and they can have an opportunity to read it and consider it for the One Book, One Nebraska program. So, so that is a question you have about someone did want to know about nominating. So it's good that we I knew we were going to get to this. So I was waiting for this. So um, the only books that are ever put up to possibly be the one book in Nebraska do come from nominations from citizens. No one on the committees or from uh, Center for the Book or anything come up with the titles. You just wait for people to tell you what books they think might be good for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's really a people's not a people's choice, but starts off as people's choice <laughs> can we can we nominate more than one book using oh, yeah. a, a, a different form for each book yes yeah 
because as you were saying that, I thought I thought of two books I want to nominate. <laughs> <laughs> well, should I get a friend to nominate one? <laughs> yeah, and it could be any genre. It could be poetry. It could be nonfiction fiction. Mm -hmm. Good. We had a book of poetry a few years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Twenty eighteen. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Tessa, but yes, 2018, uh, Nebraska Presence, which was a collection of poetry, was the one book, one Nebraska. Yep. And uh, I, I would also like to interject two things while we're on this page, if you don't mind. Uh, one is that uh, these nominations should not be children's books or young adult books. Um, That's true. These are for, uh, it sounds weird to say adult readers, uh, but they are books that, that would appeal to uh, people at a reading level that would be defined as an adult level. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, we talked about Nebraska author, we talked about Nebraska theme, Nebraska setting, but the third question here in print is really an important one because mm -hmm. um, over the years, we have had uh, books nominated that were no longer in print. And if the book is not in print, it makes it um, almost impossible for the nominating committee to uh, lay our hands on it, to be able to read and consider it. And it also makes it that much more difficult um, for libraries to have access to it. So we would encourage people to uh, be aware that this in print uh, criterion is an important one for us to be able to bring the book to the state of Nebraska. Thank you, Becky. Yeah, those are yeah. all great points. And I will mention, since you did mention about this being for adults, that we the, we at the Library Commission do actually have a separate uh, program of one book for Nebraska kids and teens. Mm -hmm. so if you are looking for something that is um, for the younger type readers, um, we do have that program um, and we do a, the new book is chosen every year uh, and you can find that on our website. We did an Encompass Live about it earlier this, as well this mm -hmm. year. Thank so you, Krista. That's not a program through the Center for the Book and it's not right. a Nebraska, I mean it's, it's books that have been chosen by library staff here at the commission for, um, we have a children's and a young adult uh, novel chosen, but they don't necessarily have a Nebraska theme or setting in them. They're, we're just picking books that we think would be great reads for uh, children that year. And we always have book club kits available for those books as well. So yes, like Becky said, the One Book One Nebraska program is specifically an adult um, book club reading program no, that doesn't mean high school students or middle school students couldn't read the book, but that's the last slide I have. And then here's my information. If you guys have questions about the One Book One Nebraska program, um, please just let me know and we'll uh, answer those for you. This is great. All right, let's Does see. Have any questions? Um, yeah, if anybody does have any questions, go ahead and any other questions, type into the question section or go to webinar interface, you can answer them. Uh, I didn't know if, um, since we did briefly lose Christy there at the beginning, I didn't know if you wanted to um, say anything as well about the um, the program and one book. Oh, I suspect you all covered it beautifully. Um, just that the Center for the Book loves this program. It is an honor to be a part of it and we so appreciate um, the active authors that participate and all of the support from Humanities Nebraska to make it all possible and the Nebraska Library Commission, of course, because without all those partnerships, none of this would happen and it certainly would never have the reach that it does. So um, I guess I would just say thank you and please nominate those books, encourage your friends to nominate the books that they think are fabulous and I know there are lots of people across the state that are looking forward to having Jonas come to their libraries to talk about this book or her other books and do writing workshops. Um, so be another great year of One Book, One Nebraska. One last thing um, while we maybe wait for some questions to pop in. If you book Jonas for 
an event, shoot me an email, let us know so that we can um, post it on the One Book, One Nebraska events page. That mm -hmm. way, people in your surrounding communities might be able to come attend. Um, if she's having an online event, we post that. If she's doing a book signing or a bookstore event across the state, we want to know about it so that we can try to let everybody know about it that we can. So that's one thing I ask you guys to do is just to submit those um, events so that we can get them on our page. Absolutely. I will add to that that when you book through the Speakers Bureau, the Humane Nebraska, we will also publicize your program through our weekly blasts and on our website to help people know about it too. That's really good. That's really helpful to mm -hmm. get that kind of support. I hope people will do that. I will also send you both of you when I when I get some when people contact me and I'm not sure who they're going through. People are just contacting me, so I never, so I just, uh, they've always done that anyway, so, but I will start sending those too, so that you'll know, yeah, good. All right, I don't see any questions, new questions yet. Anybody have any last minute desperate questions you want to ask of anyone um, about the program, about um, one book, one Nebraska Center for the Book, or anything you want to ask uh, Janice about the about her book, about um, the story, um, we can talk about that too. Well, I would like to um, make a comment. I've known Janice for a long time and have read several of her novels, and I've read The Bones of Paradise more than once. And when Janice was reading the first chapter about uh, JB and the end of his life, what really struck me was that this is a book that when, for me, when I finish reading it, the next thing I do is I go back and reread the first chapter uh, mm. because she's built this beautiful cycle. And so um, I would not be at all surprised to hear other readers over the year as they discuss this book, talk about the fact that once they finish, what they most want to do is to go back and reread the beginning. And I think that's just a, um, it, it's just a, a method in which readers are really going to be captivated by the story that she's telling. Well, that's wonderful news, thank you. I, I like that. I like hearing that better than yeah. I threw it away. I hated this book. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I never wanted to hear another word. <laughs> discussion that can make for an animated, interesting discussion amongst the members. However, but <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's true. And um, yeah, as I was reading it, I was actually thinking, yeah, I did kind of get all of the. I got. The beginnings of the themes that the tensions the dramas that are going to be explored and played out in the novel are all in that opening and i didn't know it when i was writing it 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 was very intuitive it came out of my unconscious i'm sure and my job then was to see if i could play those out throughout the novel if i could explore each thing that's suggested there so thank you for for finding that and and I I I'm impressed that you read the novel more than once too. Oh. I've got to say. It's amazing. absolutely Jonas. And as I said, I've read several of your books. Thank you. I'm I'm very pleased. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> We do have a question. Is um you, you mentioned the book club kits to borrow those. Is um it available in other formats like an ebook or audiobook as well? It is. I know well, I know it's an audiobook. I imagine it's an ebook. I think it is. Yeah, was it is it in our overdrive? I do we know. Uh-oh. What did I do? I know when they did the audiobook, they sent me um 
they, you know, they, they, the, the publisher said, okay, now here, we're going to send you three examples of, or samples of readers. And the one they first mm -hmm. sent me was this guy with a kind of Western drawl, kind of like, you know, gun smoke or something. Because they <laughs> thought, oh, it's a Western. <laughs> I said, no, mm -hmm. nobody from Nebraska ever sounded like that. And no, we're not doing that. <laughs> you know kind of a tough guy uh, and there, i'm sure yeah, they someone, only look at the beginning <laughs> yeah and then yeah, someone I did say they, actually it is available in our nebraska overdrive group yes so if you're yeah, a member of so, overdrive, yeah so it is available as both an audiobook and an ebook in nebraska overdrive so good good that's out there and i'm so glad you made that choice john because the make you break a book for an audiobook it was so, it was comic. Well, you know, when you deal with New York, God love them. You don't know what a pole barn is or, you know, they don't, they're, they're a whole bunch of language that isn't theirs and, or experiences. And, yeah, one day I'll tell people about, um, and I do talk about this, the time I brought my agent. Oh, no, it was my editor. I brought her out to the Sand Hills in, in January and late december early january and that was an experience if if any of you've ever been out there there's nothing it's it's completely beautifully quiet and pristine mm -hmm. and um, she was i just pulled the car over and stopped at a you know where there was nothing and she's she was kind of scared because she was she grew up in manhattan this was mm -hmm. really terrifying to her and I enjoyed it. She she used to yell at me about having my characters drive around in truck pickup trucks too much. She said they need to go. Why are they driving so much? And so oh. then she finally understood. <laughs> that's, that's how it she, is. Yeah. She didn't know how to drive a car even. She had never learned how to drive a car because oh if you're in New York City, you don't drive. And so yeah. for yeah. her, the characters driving around in pickups seemed bizarre. Mm -hmm. Like I had some strange obsession. <laughs> No, no. I, I understand that. Yes, I'm actually originally from from New York. Um, oh, are you? There yeah, you go. Um, upstate New York, Saratoga Springs. Oh, and yeah. When I moved here 20 years ago, well, I visited here first and um, in Lincoln in the city. It was fine. Um, yeah. As soon as I left, it was a little agoraphobic. The open spaces were just oh yeah you read about it you see pictures it's not the same as sitting there and saying how far away is that farmhouse no and, oh, but yeah. now you, you grow to love it yes i the open yeah. the, just the, the expanse and everything it's everything is different you know in new york we have mountains and and forests oh but yeah we have the open spaces and it's all they're both good yeah <laughs> no i agree i loved upstate new york loved it and saratoga springs is just mm -hmm. incredibly beautiful it really is all right, and we do have a comment from someone. I, I was wondering about this too. Um, our regional library systems do have grants sometimes, um, and specifically this one, she's in uh, the Three Rivers Library System, but the others may well, um, grants for Humanities Nebraska speakers. So if your library or school um, that can't afford or doesn't have that $50 to um, bring someone in, um, look to your um, regional library system to see if they have grants that they would be able to give you for that. Um, and here, Right now, our grants have been awarded already, but through the Library Commission, we would do that as well if someone submitted a grant application just for either, um, well, for the youth ones, if the, for some of the teen books or our library improvement grants or something, um, programming type stuff um, could be something you could apply for as well. Next year. Yeah, good. Future, for future reference. <laughs> but yeah, look to your regional systems now and see if they can help you with any of the costs that might be involved. All right, uh, we just hit 11 o'clock, um, but if anybody has any, we don't get cut off right now. If anyone has any other questions, any other comments they want to make, go right ahead. Um, we do have just a few other comments saying, thank you everyone, can't wait to read it. Um, if people Good. haven't done it, gotten to reading it yet, they're very excited. Good. I think people every year are always waiting to see what is going to be the one book and want to know what it's doing, going to be and making plans. Yeah, I was so excited about it. Becky texted me as soon as it was announced. <laughs> I was helping with a band competition. I wanted to know what was going to be One Book, One Nebraska. Yeah, yeah. No, I was, 
as I keep saying, I was utterly surprised. I had no idea this was happening. So <laughs> it was a perfect, a, a lovely, uplifting moment to what has been just not a very good year, <laughs> 2021. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness we're done with that. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm right. hoping 2022 will begin to move into the positive soon, mm -hmm. soon, soon. Fingers crossed. Yes. Yeah. No. Good. But at least we have books. We can we can just hold yes. up and read fiction. I've done so much. Sometimes I read a book every two days now. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes every day. My father always read a book a day, so it was wow. he was the same. He was a very fast reader. But he could remember it all too. See, that's my problem. If I read very fast, I, yeah, I can get through it. But do I remember it? <laughs> Parts a little. I don't know. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to meeting everybody. I I love driving around. That's driving around any place is my favorite activity. And I've been locked down with the pandemic, which has been kind of scary because mm -hmm. you know you're just sitting there looking at the dogs and they're looking at you. <laughs> and you're deciding which is going to eat you who first. <laughs> but aside from that, um, yeah, so I can hardly wait for things to loosen up and we can get out on the road again. So yeah. I can go for They're excited somewhere. to have you come too, either good, good. person or, or um, remotely, which either way. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right, there aren't any other questions coming in. Any other uh, last words from everybody? It sounds so dramatic, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that final thoughts. <laughs> encouraging final thoughts <laughs> yeah. all right and i think we can wrap it up for today's show uh thank you everybody for joining us today um thank you becky and christy and erica tessa <laughs> Everyone, all for being here with us um for our annual intro to the uh, um the one book, one Nebraska. Uh, reach out, uh, schedule your sessions, get your books in hand, and start reading. Um, I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen. There it is. Okay. There we go. All right. And wrap things up. So um, that'll wrap it up for today's show. Uh, this is our session page for here. And um, Tessa was showing lots of the um, websites and we have them all linked from our session page here so one book nebraska humanities nebraska center for the book uh, celebration of nebraska books so all of those are on there for um you to be able to jump to all of them from the page here um this is our main encompass live page with our upcoming shows but um i said i would show you here is where our archives are listed underneath um the upcoming shows most recent ones at the top of the page so today's will be here um should be done um, and available tomorrow sometime, uh, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready. We will have a link to the recording on our YouTube channel, a link to and a link to Tessa's slides. So if you haven't wanted to look at those, um, and then of course all the links that are built in there. Um, as you can see here, we do have a search feature if you do want to look for any of our previous shows, um, you can search um, through here. And we do have our, we had mentioned the um, one book from Nebraska Kids and Teens. We did a show, did a show last August about the 2021 and the 2022 titles. So if you're interested in those, you can um, watch that and access the information about the Kids and Teens program that we have through here through the Library Commission. Um, but while we're here on this search, you can search our show, full show archives or just the most recent 12 months. You want something just recent. That is because this is our full show archives. And I'm not going to scroll all the way down because there's too many. Um, going back to the very beginning when Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So we're going on like what, 12 years of archives here. Um, so just pay attention if you do watch any recordings to the original broadcast date, they all have a date there. Um, many of the shows will stand the test of time, still be good, useful information, but some, some things will become outdated. Um, services or programs may have changed drastically. They may no longer exist anymore. Links may be broken. Such pages have moved. So just pay attention when you are watching any of our previous shows. We also do have a Facebook page for um, the show. If you do like to use Facebook, you can give us a like over there. We give reminders. Here's your reminder to log into today's show, highlighting our speakers. Um, 
let you know when recordings of previous shows are available. So if you do like to use um, Facebook, you can use that. Also, we use the hashtag NCompLive wherever we post on social media, um, Twitter, Instagram. I think that's all we're doing now so far, right, Tessa? <laughs> Twitter, yeah. Instagram, Facebook, yeah. It's all the places that we reach out, so you can follow us there as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, get over here. So. I mean, I'll get back to the page. There we go. All right. So um, that wraps up for today's show. Um, look for my email with um, information about um, today's recording. Um, just one last little um, information I want to share is our Big Talk from Small Libraries is our online conference for small libraries. It's to, going to be held February 25th um, this year. It's always the last Friday in February. But the call for speakers is open through this Friday. So if you have something you would like to share, um, and you're a small library with an FTE of 10,000 or less. That's who we, gen we try and keep to on the show. This is speakers from actually small libraries, all types, public, academic, school, anything. Um, get your pro a proposal in to me um, by this Friday, and you might be able to be on our um, Big Talk from Small Libraries annual conference. This is the 11th conference, 11th annual conference of this. So um, I just want to remind people to send in your proposals. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Hopefully, you see, you see I've got some open dates here. This is our schedule at the moment. I'm working on filling in some dates and stuff. So keep your eye on here for um, other shows coming on um, and what the topics are going to be. Um, other than that, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Go out and read Bones of Paradise and talk about it with all your friends and family and everyone. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.